Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We are here with Joel Horwitz, who's the CMO of Wendisco. Joel, great to see you. Formerly of IBM, we've known you for many years, had great conversations when you were at IBM, rising star, now at Wendisco. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah, it's, it's uh, really great to be at Wendisco and great to be here with theCUBE. So we've had many conversations, again, going back. You, you were a rising star in data, you know, you know the, the cloud real well. Mm -hmm. Why Wendisco? Why leave IBM uh, for Wendisco? What attracted you to well, the opportunity? Yeah, really three things. Um, first and foremost, the people. Um, I've known the Wendisco team now for years. Uh, back in uh, my Hadoop days when I was at Datamir, I used to you know, hang out with the Wendisco team at Data After Dark in New York, which was great. They had the best um, marketing there at the time. Uh, to the product, I mean, I, I always, I won't join a company unless the product is really legit and um, they have, you know, they have an absolutely great technology and they are applying it to some really tough problems. And third is just the potential. Um, really, the potential of this company is not even close to being tapped. Um, so there's a ton of, you know, there's a ton of runway there. And so for me, I'm just total, uh, totally grateful and totally honored to be a part of Wandisco. What's the tailwind for them, the trend that's, that the wave that they're on, if you will, because you mentioned a lot of, <laughs> um, there's a lot of runway or headroom, a lot of market growth, certainly cloud, David Richards will talk about that, but what's, what attracted you? Because you, you, you knew the cloud game too. Yeah. IBM made a yeah. big run at the cloud. Yeah, well I came in um, at IBM through the data uh, door, so to speak, um, and then I walked through the cloud door um, as well while I was there. Um, and the reality is that data continues to be the lifeblood of an enterprise, no matter what. And, and so, um, you know, what I saw in Wandisco was that they had um, technology that allowed people to, and large enterprise, to um, frankly replicate or manage their data across Hadoop clusters from cluster to cluster. Um, and then we ended up, um, when I spoke uh, with you last, with David here, um, we also recognized the opportunity that just how, um, um, you know, copying data, large scale data from um, one Hadoop cluster to another um, is challenging. Copying data, it's no, it's really not that different of copying data from say HDFS to an object storage or S3 um, is pretty similar problem. And so that's why, you know, just this past week we announced live data for multi-cloud. Explain <laughs> live data for multi-cloud. I've read it in the news, got some buzz. This is a great trend live. Mm -hmm. We're, we do a lot of live videos on theCUBE. Live implies real time, mm -hmm. data is data. Multi-cloud is clearly becoming one of those enterprise categories. Yeah. You know, first it was public cloud, then hybrid cloud, yeah. now it's multi-cloud. How does live data fit into multi-cloud? Yeah, so multi-cloud um, and live data, uh, as I just mentioned, like we have live data for Hadoop, so that's pr fairly obvious. So if you're going multi-cluster, you can, you can do that. Um, as well as from, you know, even on-prem, data center to data center, so uh, multi-site, if you will. Um, but multi-cloud is um, a, a really interesting phrase that's kind of cropped up this year. Um, we're seeing it used quite a lot. Um, and it's mainly been, um, the focus in multi-cloud has been mainly focused on applications. And so talking about, you know, how do you have a container strategy um, or a virtualization strategy for your applications. Um, and so I think of it really as a multi-cloud strategy as opposed to a multi-cloud architecture. Um, so, you know, we're helping our enterprise clients think about their multi-cloud strategy. So they're not locked into any one vendor. So they're able to take advantage of all the great innovations that are happening, if you ask me, on the cloud first, and then ultimately comes down to, um, at times, on-prem. What's the pitfalls between multi-cloud strategy and multi-cloud architecture? You said customers don't want to get locked in, obviously. No one wants to get locked in. Multi-vendor used to be a big buzzword mm -hmm. uh, during the first, that, that next, last wave of computer client server. Yeah. Now multi-cloud seems like multi-vendor. What, what do you mean by architecture versus strategy? How do you parse that? Yeah, so I mean, like I said, um, you know, in terms of your data, right, and it all comes back to your data, um, if you, um, you know, go all in on, say, one vendor and you're architecting for that vendor only and you're choosing, um, you know, your migration, your data management tools um, for a particular cloud vendor, and said a different way, if you're only using the native tools from that vendor, then it's it's very difficult to ever move off of that cloud or to take advantage of other clouds as they, for example, uh, maybe have new IoT offerings or have new blockchain offerings or have new AI offerings, um, as you know, as many others um, come on the scene. And so, 
that's what I mean by strategy is if you choose you know, one vendor for um, your certain tool set, then it's going to be very difficult to maintain you know, um, arbitrage between the different vendors. Talk about um, how you guys are attacking the market. Obviously, you know, it's clear that data has been a fundamental part of when Disco's value proposition. Mm -hmm. you know, moving data around has been a top concern even back in the Hadoop days, now it's in the cloud. Yeah. Moving data across the network, whether it's cloud to cloud or cloud to data center, or to the edge of the network, yep. is a challenge. Yep. Yeah, we, um, you know, at IBM, uh, when I was there in 2016 and we were coming up with our, uh, you know, strategy when I was in Corp Dev, um, we talked about um, four different areas of, of data. We talked about data gravity, so data has gravity. We talked about data movement, and we talked about uh, data science and we talked about data governance. And I still think those are still relatively the four major themes around this topic of data. Um, and so absolutely data has gravity, and not just in terms of the absolute size and weight, if you will, um, but it also has um, you know, applications that depend on it, the business itself depends on it. And so the types of strategies that we've seen to migrate data, say, say to the cloud, um, or have a hybrid you know, data management um, strategy has been you know, a lift and shift or to load it onto the back of, I always picture that you know, image of um, the forklift lifting all those tape drives onto the airplane, you know, the IBM version of that. And you know, that's, that's like a century old at this point. So yeah. you know, we have a way to replicate data continuously um, using our patented consensus technology um, that's in the lifeblood of our company, which is distributed computing. And so having a way to migrate data to the cloud without disrupting your business um, is not just marketing speak, but it's really what we are able to do for our clients. How do you guys go to market? How do you guys serve customers? What's the strategy? So primarily we formed um, a number of strategic partnerships, um, obviously um, one with IBM that I helped uh, spearhead while I was there. Um, we actually. Um, just recently announced that we now support Big SQL, so it's actually the first um, opportunity where um, if you, um, you are using um, a database um, provided by IBM, you can actually replicate across different databases and still query it with Big SQL, which is a big deal, right? It means you can still um, have access to your data while it's in motion, right? That's pretty cool. Um, and then so IBM is, is there, and then secondly, um, we formed a num number of other strategic partnerships with the other cloud vendors, of course. Alibaba, we have an OEM, Microsoft, we have preferred selling motion with them. Um, AWS, of course, we're in their marketplace. Um, so primarily, um, we sell through a number of our key partnerships because you know, we are um, fairly integrated, like I said, into the, into the architecture of these platforms. And, just to comment more deeply on that, you know, when you look at um, object storage on each of these various public cloud vendors, they may look similar on the surface, maybe they all use the same APIs or have some level of um, similar interaction, they look like they're the same, the pricing might be the same, but you go like one level deeper and they're all very different. They're all very different flavors of object storage. And so while it might seem like, oh, that's you know, trivial to, to work with, it, it really isn't. It's extremely non-trivial. So um, we help um, not only our customers solve that, but we also help our partners significantly um, help their clients move to the cloud, to their cloud faster. So you basically work with, through people who sell your product mm -hmm. to the end user customer or through their application or service. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's our ma main route to market, I would say. The other, obviously, the main, we have a direct sales force who's out there. Um, working with the best um, clients in, in the world. AMD is um, a great customer of ours who we recently helped uh, migrate to uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, and we have a number of other you know, large enterprise customers in retail and finance and media. Um, and so really, um, you know, it, when it comes down to it, yeah, it's those two major motions, one through mm -hmm. uh, the cloud vendors themselves, because frankly, in most cases, they don't have this technology to do it. You know, they're trying to basically um, take snapshots of data, and they're struggling to convince their customers to it move to the cloud. It becomes a key feature in platforms. Yes, it does. Right, so, so that's obviously what attracts sellers. What other things would attract sellers or partners for you? What 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 motivates them? Obviously, the, the IP mm -hmm. clearly is the number one. Economics. What's the other value? Yeah, I mean the. <clears throat> I mean, look, as part of um, you know. The end goal isn't to move data to the cloud. The end goal is to move business processes to the cloud and then be able to take advantage of the other 
um, value adds that already exist on the cloud. And so if you know if you're um, you know saying what's the benefit there? Well, once you do that move, then you can um, sell into um, clients with all your additional value add. So that's really powerful um, if you are stuck with like this stage of like, hey, how do we actually migrate mm -hmm. you know, data to the cloud? So IBM Think is coming up. What's mm -hmm. your uh, view of what's happening there? What's, what are you guys going to be doing there? So you were on the IBM side, now yeah. you're on the other side of the table. You've been on both sides of the table. Yeah. So yeah. what's going on at Think, and how does WAN Disco well, vector, and certainly the Cube will be there. Yeah, we'll be there. So WAN Disco is um, a sponsor of IBM Think as well. Clearly, as I mentioned, we'll um, be talking about Big Replicate, which is our Hadoop um, replication offering uh, with IBM that's sold with IBM. Um, the other one, as I mentioned, is Big SQL. So that's a new offering that we just um, announced this past, uh, this past month. Um, so we'll be talking about that and showing um, a number of great examples of how that actually works. So if you're going to be at Think, uh, come by our booth um, and check that out. Um, in addition to that, I mean, clearly um, IBM is also talking about multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. So hybrid data management, um, hybrid cloud is a big topic. Um, so I can, you know, you can expect to see um, at IBM Think a lot of um, conversations on the application side. Um, in terms of obviously with their acquisition of Red Hat, um, you can well imagine they're going to be talking a lot about you know the software stack um, there. But I would say that you know we'll be talking and spending most of our time talking about you know how to manage your data across um, different environments. Where's the product roadmap heading? I know you guys don't like to go into specific some public um, yeah. sensitive information, but generally speaking, where's the main trend lines that you guys are going to be building on? Obviously, cloud data they're all coming together good core competency there for Wendisco. What's next, what's the next level for you guys? Yeah, look, I mean, so, um, so what's really fascinating, um, and I actually didn't realize this when I joined Wendisco, just to be um, uh, completely transparent. Um, you know, Wendisco um, has a core piece of technology called Decone, Distributed Coordination Engine. Um, it essentially is a form of, um, you know, blockchain, really, it's consensus technology, it's an algorithm. And that's been their secret sauce um, since the founding of the company. Um, and so they originally applied that to code uh, through source code management. Um, and then only you know, in this last um, you know, few years, they've applied it to data. Um, so you can guess at other areas that we might apply it to. And already this past year, we actually filed two patents um, the area of blockchain are really um, distributed ledger technology, as we're starting to hear it called in the actual enterprise that's using it. Um, but you can expand that to any other, you know, enterprise asset really um, that has that's big, right? That has value, you know, and that you want to manage across different environments. So you can imagine, you know, a lots of other assets that we could apply this to. Not only mm -hmm. code, not only data, not only ledgers, yeah. but what are the other assets? And so that's essentially what is we're that protectable at. IP? The patents, so those are filed on the blockchain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so Decone is certainly patent. Patented. Um, that's a really difficult. I'm sure Jagain will talk more about this. Yeah, we'll get into it. Um, but that's a really, uh, you know, there's probably a handful of people in the world, um, and they might all be working at One Disco at this point, <laughs> uh, who actually know how that works. And it's essentially Paxos, which yeah. is a really gnarly problem to solve, a really difficult math yeah. problem. Um, and as David mentioned earlier, you know, Google, you know, smartest, the other smartest kind of company in the world. Um, you know, published their paper on Spanner, and as you said, they used brute force, really, to solve the problem, where we have a very, you know, elegant solution using software, right? So it's a really um, great time to be at One Disco because I just see that there's so many applications of our technology, but right now, you know, we're mainly focused on what our yeah. customers are asking for. You guys had a great core card. Joel, final question for you. Mm -hmm. Where do you see it going, um, One Disco? What are your plans? Uh, do you have anything in mind? Do you want to share anything notable around what you're doing and what you think when Disco will be in a few years? Yeah, I mean, we have um, an incredible team, as I mentioned. The people um, that are joining One Disco, um, as David mentioned, I myself, not to say you know too much there, but um, the new um, you know folks that have joined our research and development team. Um, but we've we've been making some great hires um, to One Disco, so I'm really excited about. Um, the team I'm going actually um, to visit, we have a great team in, um, in Europe, in, in the UK, in the United Kingdom. Um, so I'm going to go see them next week. Um, but we have just the company culture is what you know, drives me. I think that's just one of those hard things really to find. 
Um, and so that was what, you know, I'm really excited about. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening there. Um, you know, on that note, it's actually kind of funny because on one of the um, articles that, um, uh, you know, talked about live data for multi-cloud, um, you know, asked the question and her headline was, are you down to boogie, you know? So Disco continues to be a great uh, meme for us with our, with our <laughs> name, uh, unintentional. So as a marketer, it's, it's a pretty fun time to be at One Disco. 70s and 80s were great times. Certainly <laughs> I'm an 80s guy. Joel, thanks for coming on. Appreciate the update. Uh, Joel Horwitz, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of Wendisco. Uh, really on a nice wave right now. Cloud growth, data growth, all coming together. Real IP, looking forward to hearing more what comes down the pike. For those guys, we'll see them at IBM Think. I'm John Furrier here in the studios in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.